Hello guys, welcome back to another game development tutorial. Today we are continuing with the Space Shooter series. Um, so today we will be doing the clear movement, and I will also talk to you about these components, um, because I forgot to last time. So what a box collider does is, if you just click on this, you can edit the collider by just clicking and dragging on these little squares. And what a box collider does, it just allows collision. So without a, a box collider, it will just go, go through things. But with a box collider, it will collide, collide with them. And what a rigid body does, a rigid body just adds gravity or physics uh, to uh, something. And that's really it. Um, so yeah, let's make our first script. Okay, so to make a script, um, there's two options. Either you can add a component, type in player movement, or you can right click in the assets, or on the project panel, do create, and C sharp script, and then call this player movement. Um, I'm going to switch between the two um, probably every video, I don't really know, but I, I, I'm kind of like the middle guy, I don't really care, so I'm just going to press enter. Okay, so you'll see it compiling, you'll see like a little loading, 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 then once that goes away, then everything will be unfrozen, and then you can actually do stuff. So now, yet again, there's two options to apply the script to the player. You can either add the script by just doing add component, typing in player movement, or you can just drag it on. I, yet again, I will be switching between the two, but just know that it's the exact same thing. Okay, so now to actually open and edit the script, um, we will just double click on it, and it will open Visual Studio. Um, so, Visual Studio should come with Unity, like it should install two things, um, but in case it doesn't, I will have another download link and installing and setup link for Visual Studio, like how, how to do it. I, I won't be teaching you, but still, you know, you'll, you'll still know. Um, so, when we open Visual Studios, we will see this. It will look different, because, you know, I'm a big fan of Brack, so I'm like, yo, I really like your Visual Studios look, so I'm just going to copy it. Great. Okay. So, um, right now, I'm just not going to really talk about the functionality. You'll just kind of get into the habit of it, and then eventually you'll start to get it, but I will go over some of it. Okay, so I just start by just deleting the void update and void start. And if you've done scrap before, then the void start is basically the when click block and everything below that. And the update is basically the forever loop. And no, there is no void repeat. <laughs> um, okay, so let's start. So, variables. They are extremely important when it comes to coding. So, <clears throat> there are three types that they have to know right now. Let's say four, actually. So, there is a float. So, we'll try public float. Call it speed. Then, we can set it equal to some value. And then, whenever you are dealing with floats, or have like a point something, you always have to have F at the end to show that it is a float. There's also another variable type called an int, but speed in I don't know. Um, you can set it equal to something, but it has to be a whole number, or else you know it just will read as an error. And by the way, when it comes to scripting like this. You always have to have a semicolon at the end of the line, as long as it's not a function. 
So think of a semicolon like a period. Okay, time for the other variable. So we've gone over float, int, uh, let's just go over boolean. So Visual Studio just just defines boolean as bool because it's shorter. Bool is basically just true or false. In fact, it is true or false. I'm just gonna call it. It's true. Then you can set it to either false or true, but you cannot set it to any number. Then the last type of variable that I will be showing you in this is a string. So this is um, letters or numbers or wh or whatever you want. But when you start typing, you will notice that you will get a big error, and that is because you have to have the parentheses. So now I just write "Hello World." It will not mark it as an error. Of course, I have to give this a name. Okay. And it's not an error. Okay. So now, we shall start coding. We will delete all except for the public float speed. And we, just to demonstrate, if we mark it as private, and then private float speed, and we go back into Unity, <coughs> we can clear this console. You know, I care about that right now. And select on the player. And um, on this player script, it shows nothing below it. But now, if we go back into Visual Studio and just mark it as public float and let it compile in Unity, we can now adjust the speed. So I'm just going to keep it as public float. Y you can just do wh whatever you want as long as you're happy with, with the speed. Okay, so now we need to update the speed every frame. So we'll say void uh, update. So it's basically the scratch forever function. And now I will teach you how to, you know, add inputs. So we will say if... Uh, then two, then two parentheses. Uh, yeah, parentheses. I think that's what's called. <laughs> Some. Um, then in those parentheses, we'll write input. Yep, input. And then uh, Visual Studio has an autocorrect. So if you just write I N, it will show all of these things that it, that you could write. So, there's two ways of making it autocorrect. One is just pressing enter, then the other one is to double click on it. Okay, so we can just say if input dot get access raw, and the difference between get access and get access raw, get access um, is, is when Unity tries to smooth out the movement, so it like comes to a sliding stop, but get access raw is more snappy, so it stops immediately after you let go of that key. <coughs> okay, let us uh, continue. Then right after get access raw, we just want to do another set of parentheses and do key code dot. Then whatever key you want, I'm just gonna make it D to go to the right, and I prefer arrows or WSD, so I'm just going to go into the first set of parentheses and do OR, and an OR is two slashes, I don't even know what that is, <coughs> then I'll just rewrite this, input dot get x, get key down, uh, it's actually get key, key code dot rate arrow, get key. Okay, then to actually put stuff in this, so this is basically saying if this input is detected, then it will do something. So it won't say 
Um, we will do, um, brackets or braces or whatever. Then press enter so it separates them. So now, whatever we put in here, it will say, <coughs> if this input is detected, then it will do whatever is in this function. So, how to move an object, there are two things, but for this video, we're just going to cover one thing, and we can just write transform dot translate in the parentheses, and if you hover over translate, uh, you will see what it takes in a, a vector 3, and it is optional space re relative to. So, we are just going to write, so we want to move on the x-axis, so that will be in the first slot, so we will do speed, multiply it by time dot delta time, so it is frame rate independent. That basically means that if you have um, a good mo monitor or laptop, um, and if we do not say time dot delta time, then, then the player will move very fast. But if you are on a low-end computer, then it will move very slow. So that is basically what frame independent means. So now, um, we do not want any movement on the Y or Z. So to say 0F, 0F. Okay, just like that. Now we're going to go back into Unity. We're at 11 minutes. I, I just saved the project. Uh, just know. Um, same thing with Visual Studio's Control S or Command S to save. <coughs> uh, you'll see if there is a star next to CS, that means class, <coughs> then it is not saved. So you can hit uh, save, and then that star will disappear, asterisk, whatever. Then it's the same thing with Unity. If I just make like a change, asterisk, and then when I press save, the asterisk will go away. Okay, so let's try this new movement code. This will only move right so far. So now if we press D or left arrow, you will see that it moves. And then, if we just increase the speed, tell us to say 50, wow, it will go faster. Okay, I'm just set it to maybe 25. Okay, so let's just make it go the other way now. So, now, we will say, oh, we can just copy this, say, control C, down here, control V, if input dot get key A, or, that's what these two slash, uh, ha forward, uh, upward facing slashes, I don't know, or input dot get key, key code dot left arrow, just know you can also navigate for the autocorrect. You can navigate with the up arrow and down arrow. If input the, the get key A or the left arrow, then it will do exactly the opposite. So it will go the opposite direction. So we just want to negative the speed. And it's as easy as just writing minus. And now when we go save and go back into Unity, it will compile, then when we press play, it will move from left to right. And that is our basic movement so far. I do want to do one thing in this video, because we'll say that we still have like four minutes. Uh, we will, if this asset store button is not here, you will go to window an asset store, and it will just pop up. It'll say connecting to asset store. And we can just search up spaceship or something. I don't know. Now, we can just drag this all the way down, so now everything that we look at is free. And we want everything to be 3D, because we're, we're working a 3D game. So you can just check that box. So yeah, these... Spaceships look pretty cool, so you can choose whatever spaceship you want. Hmm. Um, I think I'm gonna choose 
this spaceship all, all the way down here. And I already know that it works because I've used this before. So, since I've not, so, since this is your first time in the asset store, probably, uh, you'll see a download button. Just press that. It will maybe take at the most a minute to download. But after that, it will show this import button. So you can just click on that. Then it will bring up this page. I'm just going to close that. And we do not want the uni scene. So we're just going to un un uncheck that box. Make sure that everything else is checked. And do import. It will just import it really quick. <clears throat> it might take some time if you're on a low-end PC or computer or whatever. So then you will see in this project panel under assets, UVA Trident. I'm just gonna rename this folder Spaceship Model. Then I'm I'm just gonna click on this arrow so it drops down. Go under prefab and just drag that out. So this is basically the preview of the ship. Pretty cool. So I'm just gonna delete that actually. Go under player, then under the mesh filter, so the top component, we're just going to click on this little circle, and I believe it's just default. <laughs> so it, it, it will look weird, let's just resize that to 111. Um, then we can just remove this box collider, because we will do something else. Um, so we can just resize it to maybe 3, 3, 3. Twee, twee, twee. Yep, that looks good. And then... <clears throat> I believe... We can just put on the, the materials. I think I like the military one. Toy one. Oh, it's also backwards. Or upside down. Okay. Yeah, I I'm just gonna choose military. So, what I like to do, so we can just right click to create a new object, press pre empty, reset this position, call this player, and then rename this player to GFX or graphics, and then we can just right click on rigid body, go to copy component, then right click on it again, say remove, go under player, click on this little circle right here, and do paste component as new. And then we can just say go under graphics again, and we can just remove this player movement, and then search up player movement on here. And set the speed to 25. Now, the parent in, in, in object, what parenting does, is it basically, uh, whatever object is the child of the parent, uh, will move with the parent. So, to make it a parent or a child, we can just drag the GFX under the player so it highlights it with blue, then just let go. Beautiful. And now, we can just rotate it by 180 degrees on the Y. So now, it is facing correctly, and when we press play, it works exactly the same. So now I'm just going to size up. Uh... We can do decimals with the scale to make it even more precise. Uh, so yeah, I think that looks good. Yep. Okay, so that is my spaceship. And that is also the end of this video. Except for one more thing. Um, so I'm just gonna... I, I personally am a clean person in game engines but not clean in real life. So I'm just going to right click under assets, do create folder, and I'm just going to call this folder scripts. Then I'm just going to drag this player movement script 
under scripts. Now, everything will be cleaned up. Just like that. Okay, that is the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed. Uh, so yeah, bye guys, and see you in the next part. Bye.